What's up, Jerome? It's so great to have you on the Smart Thank Life. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this this is me because sometimes I'm walking home, I'm uh -huh. getting to my car, I'm zoned in on my on my Instagram, and I'm not paying attention, and I should be. You should be. So, am I putting myself at risk? You are putting yourself at risk um, because most attackers they look for prey. I don't want to say prey, but they will look for those that are not paying attention. Right. You want to be paying attention. Um, please, people out there, do not have the AirPods in your ear because oh. then you won't even be able to hear footsteps. Um, you're just in your own world. Right. You want to be able to see your surroundings as if anyone is hiding behind a bush or hiding on the side of your car in some shadow. You need to be. Right. And I know this is something that you teach even from a very young age. Yes. You do self-defense classes. Tell yes. me a little bit about your program and what you do. Okay. Um, with the People's Gym, what, what I teach is I um, usually moms call me when their yes. child is being bullied on, right? Mm -hmm. So I teach them self-defense, not to hurt someone, but to keep them from being hurt. And the, one of the main reasons why I teach self-defense to young children is because of disciplinary um, reasons. It um, helps the parent. A easier parenthood with the child. Right. Because when children understand the functions of boxing, the jabbing, the crossing, the discipline, it just makes them a more respectable and more kind kid. But here's what I like about you, Jerome, that you teach them this not to promote violence. No. Actually, it's the other way around. It really is. Because I know growing up, you encountered some bullying, and it stemmed yes. from this. Yes. So, okay, so this is the thing. Most people fight because they don't know how to um, protect themselves. Right. But if you, me, okay, I've been boxing for, since 2006. I'm a three-time champion, not to toot my horn. But I'm saying that because if I was to ever get into a confrontation, you know I what can, to do. I know what to do. So I know how to defuse the situation, mm -hmm. but my ego is not involved because I've been in so many fights. I'm, I know what I'm capable of doing. Most men fight because they feel like they need to prove something. Me, yes. on the other hand, I don't. Now, yes. for women, though. For women, now, most women don't fight. It's more of a psychological thing. Mm -hmm. But for women to protect themselves against yes. men, you would want a woman. Women, I always teach women to have eye contact with their with every man you see whether you're in the elevator whether you're going or coming from why work. do you say that why eye, eye contact? contact because if i if you, if you don't look at me and i attack you but i don't kill you and you can you can't point me out in the lineup but if you give me eye contact and i can describe you i can you can describe that tattoo on my arm that mark i have on my neck that right there are very key things that all women should pay attention to. Always look your attacker in the eye if you're being attacked. Right. Yes. So basically, this is me everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere I go. So would anyone benefit from learning to box or at least the techniques that you're going to show us? Of course you will okay. benefit. First off, you will have confidence. Yes. You will be in better shape. You will know how to use your body. You will understand distance. Right now, I'm too close to you. You are? Yeah. You're not too close to me. But you're close to me. I'm too close to you. Okay. Why? What's the because, difference? Because I can I can grab you from here. See I, see how close I am? Yes. I can just grab you, pull your hair back. Whereas I can't. You can't touch me. Can't touch but you. But I knew that. It's called a, like, like a radar. Most mm. fighters have a radar. They I'm know. I'm not even thinking about that. Well, I'm a fighter. I was taught right. these things years ago. So um, imagine right now in, with your peripheral. Can you see my feet with your peripheral? Just look at me dead in my Very little. That's where to people in TV world. When a person is walking up to you, the moment their feet leaves your peripheral, that's when you should tell that person to stop if they're trying to attack you. Right. Because then that person is already too close and they can grab you easily. So you should be telling me to stop the moment my feet begin to disappear from your peripheral. That's a big red flag. That's a huge red flag, okay. especially if a person has an aggressive approach. Not just any man, but aggressive approach. If you feel like someone's really trying to harm you, if you feel uncomfortable, always keep your eye on them and put your back against some type of solid surface. That way you know nothing behind you or no one is Can't coming come. to grab okay. you. Okay, but And you're saying that this can start as early as childhood, but you even teach elderly as well. Of course, all ages. All ages. All ages need it for different purposes. Yes. You know, um, children need it for disciplinary reasons, mm -hmm. right? Um, bullying, small, minor things, um, you know, name calling. Women need it for confidence purposes. Right. You have your heels on, you just mm -hmm. came from an interview, you work like you do, you work, you walk into your car, you want to have a nice, strong personality, mentality, knowing that I can protect myself or I'm in shape. A lot of women not even in shape enough to run from their attacker. Mm -hmm. How about that? That's scary.
That's scary. That's scary. You don't think about that. No, no one does. No one does. No one I does. know. And with so much information that you're giving right now, Jerome, what is the first thing you actually teach in one of these self-defense classes? The first thing I would teach a person is balance, foot, foot, um, foundation. Foundation. You know, so depending on what hand you use, whether you put your right hand in front mm -hmm. or your left hand in front, right? So you, let's just say you put your, your left hand in front, right? Okay. So your left hand would be in front with your left leg also. Right? Left leg. So your hands will be here. Your front hand will be in front of your face for protection. Okay. Your, your back hand will be on the side for protection. And I teach people foundation. So you have a foundation, right? Okay. Yes, you have on heels. I have one. And, and but this is realistic. This what is if realistic. I am wearing heels? This is realistic. So if I see that you know how to protect yourself to a degree, I might leave you alone because you're not easy as I want. I want you easy, I want you screaming, I want you not screaming, but just like freezing, panicking. That's what I want. Right. I don't want a woman that is confident in herself to defend. Just that okay. alone, just this bluff. See that? This just confidence. The, just the fact that you're bluffing me may tell me that you know something because it's so many MMA schools out here, boxing schools. Right. Maybe you do know something. And what if I don't? I'm just and I'm only going off the fact that I'm just a man and hopefully I can just overwhelm you, right. have my way with you and do whatever. Will I ever use my hands at this point? You could. Or you can put your hands up and then you can turn your hands and open fingers. Open fingers right into my eye. Oh. Yeah, of course. Because your right. punch is not really going to do anything to me. If anything it may upset me, right? Make me more furious. Which can only aggravate you more. Aggravate me more. M maybe, so, maybe, sorry folks, maybe a rape can turn into a kill now. Because now you aggravated me. Right. But if you poke me in the eye and you run and you scream. Here is a tip that Jerome shared with me off camera. You never change, always change your shoes, but, but always wear sneakers. Okay, so here's the scenario. I'll paint the scenario for you. Let's say you come to work and people come to work before you. So, of course, people want to park closest to the door, just like at the supermarket, right? But you have to park maybe mm, in the back of the parking lot. So in the daytime, in the morning time, you come to work, everyone's in and out, going to work, no big deal. But let's say after work is over with and you wanted the people to leave late. Right. And you have to walk, but some of the parking lights are out. The parking lot, the lights are out, they're flickering, you have your heels on. You should have something in your hand for protection because you never know who's having a bad day and they want to share that so day with you. So the keys are just your weapon so too. So what, what you will want to do as a woman, one of your best defenses is have your key, your car key. Put it between the middle of your fingers and just walk. You can have it in your, you can have your hand in your purse, you can have it on the side of you. Mm -hmm. And if anybody walk up on you, you just j always go for the eye. Don't think you're going to so hurt like that. in the eye. Go for my eye. Always. First thing I do, I'm going to grab my eye. Which you, gives me time to... Please run. Run. Don't listen to these people that say, oh, if someone grab you, twist their wrist. You don't listen. People don't fall for that nonsense. You take that key, you jam that eye, you scream, and you run for help. Thank you, Jerome. And beware out there. Thank you for joining us on The Smart Life. Thank you. I feel a little more confident. Yes. Good. <laughs>